What's up, everybody? Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks here with Move the Sticks. And, Buck, the Super Bowl is over, but when you look at what happened in that Super Bowl, I think there's some lessons we can learn. There are plenty of lessons to be learned. I think many front offices would dig into the composition of the Broncos roster and use those lessons as we move forward to the draft. Yeah, you always want to emulate whoever's at the top of the mountain. That is the Denver Broncos right now. So we've come up with five lessons the Broncos taught us about championship winning football. You ready to roll, Buck? Man, let's do it. All right, first one up here. They taught us that a dominant front seven is key. We've seen that over the last few years. Dominant defense wins championships. They hit you with waves of pass rushers. Vaughn Miller, DeMarcus Ware get all the headlines, Buck, but it's a lot more than just those two players. A lot more than just the edge rushers. Look, Vaughn Miller, DeMarcus Ware are two talented players. But inside, Malik Jackson, Derek Wolf, having guys that are strong down the middle, they can affect not only the running game, but they can affect the timing of the quarterback, and they also make the game easy for the linebackers. If I'm building my defense, I want my front seven to be stellar because it really doesn't matter what I have in the back end. I can dominate the game in the trenches. The Denver Broncos showed us that that can be a valuable lesson that we can learn. Having depth up front, too. Lose Shane Ray as a first-round pick. Shaq Barrett, two other guys coming off the edge. They had a lot of different players they could throw at you. And when you look at what they had sack-wise and where they stack up in the history – here, you look, seven sacks, uh, man, th th that's right there at the very top. Look, it's a pass. It's a pass-happy league. It's a game that is governed by the quarterback. You have to be able to knock the quarterback off the pins. So because of that, I want a stable of pass rushes that can play multiple spots. The Denver Broncos showed us that's the way you build a championship defense. All right, that's lesson number one. How about lesson number two, Buck? Lesson number two comes strictly from John Elway. Build a balanced roster that's not dependent on the quarterback. John Elway built this team in the mold of those championships. <laughs> teams that he won when he won back-to-back -back Super Bowls in 97 and 98. I want a team that can run the ball on defense, that can field the number one defense, that can get after it. And because I have a dominant running game and a dominant defense, I now can play with a quarterback that's a game manager. Despite all the prolific records that Peyton Manning sets, he's just a game manager at this stage in his career. What I learned in watching this team capture the Lombardi Trophy it's not always about the quarterback. It's about the other pieces around the quarterback that allows him to win rings. You talk about having blue chip players, Buck, and you said, what, you need to have 10 to 12 of those blue chip 10 players? 10 to 12 blue Bowl? chip players on a championship roster. You need to have 12 guys that probably rank among the top five at their respective positions. Looking at the Broncos, I would say that they have – 10 to 12 blue chippers. That's why they won the championship. Yeah, you see the running backs here, C.J. Anderson and Ronnie Hillman, not big-time players, nice role players. So they have their blue chip players, and they have those solid role players to squeeze in there. All right, lesson number three, Buck, you can never have too many talented corners. I don't care if you've got two great corners, you need a third. If you got three, go get a fourth. The Denver Broncos have taught us that. They've got the two starters and Chris Harris to keep to leap to get all the attention. A young man, Roby, out of Ohio State, showed us they are a three-corner team, not a two-corner team. A three-corner team. Look, p teams are lining up in nickel 70% of the time, so you now have three starters at the cornerback position. The Denver Broncos invested heavily in their secondary, particularly at the cornerback spot. Aqib Tlaib, high price, free agent. There you see him making a play. Bradley Roby was a lower first-round pick. They re-upped Chris Harris after finding him as an undrafted free agent. Committed big money to the secondary. Those guys can all play man. They can play zone. They're versatile because all of those guys can go in the slot. Because of the versatility of their cover corners, they always have an answer for what the offense is doing. I believe that you have to invest in the back end. The Denver Broncos showed us that. Front and back end work together. Because of that, you can feel the dominant defense. Yeah, look at what they did to opposing wide receivers here. The numbers, they jump out at you, Buck. This is a dominant secondary. Let's give some some credit to the safeties as well. I thought Darian Stewart had an outstanding Super Bowl. I played really well. T.J. Ward gives them that enforcer. But to me, I think priority-wise, you start outside with the corners. They are loaded at that spot. All right, that's lesson number three. How about lesson number four? You know, we don't talk about the kicking game. People don't like punters. They don't like kickers. But you have to invest in special teams. The third phase of the game is what can set you apart from other teams the Denver Broncos won because their kicking game defeated the Carolina Panthers special teams units field position field, field position, field position. there you see Norwood taking a punt return back if I'm building a team I want to make sure that my kicker is lights out from 40 yards and in every time we reach the 40 yard line I want to be able to knock it through uh, from a, a punt and a field goal position game I want my punter to be able to flip the field pin teams inside the 20 and then I want to have a returner that strikes fear in the hearts of everyone else when I'm evaluating guys, I want blue chip guys on my special teams units. It's important you have to be able to get it done in the kicking game. Yeah, you see where they rank there 
in the kicking game, uh, top 10, top 11, in just about every single category there in the field goal department. To me, you talk about winning two of the three phases, special teams, the cheapest way. That's the cheapest phase to be able to win. And there's no excuse not to be great in special teams. It's affordable. It's affordable. You have to employ your scouts to go look at the special teams. They spend a little extra time on a school call. Make sure that you accumulate enough special teamers that we can cover kicks well and also can find a special returner that can give us that added advantage of getting favorable field position. It's important to being able to score. Yeah, one one free uh, bit of advice to teams out there. Soma Vinuku, the fullback for USC, is one of the best special teams players coverage-wise I've seen in quite some time. All right, lesson number five, Buck. Don't lose the game on offense. Protect the football. That's something that goes back forever. We always say, okay, got to value the football. Pete Carroll always used to hold up the ball, right, say it's about the ball. You think of defense as taking that away. Offensively, when the Broncos got roll, when Peyton Manning went back into the lineup, they did a great job of protecting the football. Even though Peyton Manning had a pick in this game, put a ball on the ground, overall, I think this Broncos team showed the team that protects the football the best wins as they did in the Super Bowl. It wins as they did, and we have these conversations. A lot of it stems from regular season ball and fantasy football. We want to see the quarterback throw it all over the yard. We kind of poo-poo the notion of having a game manager, but what we're seeing, the guy that manages the game, the guy that doesn't give it to the other team, the running backs that hold onto the ball, the receivers that don't drop passes, they give you an opportunity to win. And looking at the stats leading up to the Super Bowl, Broncos were 9 0 when they were plus two in the takeaway battle. You have to get that. Let's make sure that you don't give it away. You don't want to. Stop. Those are our five lessons we learned from the Denver Broncos. Yeah, learned a lot. You talk about a dominant front seven, a balanced roster, having talented corners, investing in the kicking game, and also not giving it away on offense. If you adhere to those five principles, you can win a lot of games. More than likely, you're also going to accumulate a lot of rings. Yeah, the Denver Broncos. Lessons to be learned for all of us. Out here for all 31 other teams, you can follow the Denver Broncos' path to success. That's going to do it for us here today, Bucky. But you can catch all of our all of our information, all of our podcasts, NFL.com slash podcast, as well as YouTube.com slash NFL for all your Move the Sticks material. Don't forget to leave comments. Leave some comments. Oh, yeah. Leave a comment. Let us know we're right or wrong. <laughs>